Part 4 4 and so today is the last part, at least for Yu-Gi-Oh! Anime In the anime, Duke put his whole life into creating dungeon dice monsters. When it was finished, he showed it to Pegasus and together they wanted to launch this game after the Duelist Kingdom tournament. But after the tournament, Pegasus was defeated and didn't want it anymore. So Duke took matters into his own hands. He had a huge game store build, even finished everything virtually and no one's revenge on Yugi, since it didn't work out with Pegasus because of him, even though he managed everything without Pegasus. And then we have to go to the scene where Yugi Yugi dueled against Keith, who seems to hold the cards with magic. After the duel, the friends had to rescue Yugi and the puzzle from the burning hall. How oh, this relates to Duke? Coming up. Manga. As we saw in part 1, Keith has already died. So how does this work with the hall? As everyone can already guess, the whole thing is connected to Duke. Here, Duke has a slightly greater bond with Yugi. Yugi's grandpa was undefeated in games and had made a name for himself. And whoever beat him in a game would be worthy of getting the Millennium Puzzle. Duke's dad tried, failed and since then his face was kind of hurt and he was kind of in depression and stuff. So he taught Duke how to play from an early age so that he could beat Yugi in a duel and win the puzzle. In the duel, it looks very bad for Yugi. Duke's father steals the puzzle and even dissembles it completely. Duke should then reassemble the puzzle, show that he is the best and, well, he just didn't get it right. He then lost after Bakura has supported Yugi a little. Afterwards, the hall goes up in flames. Duke's honorless father, who was to blame for everything, just runs away while Joey had to save Yugi and the puzzle. Anime. Panic wins off screen against Mai. By the time the friends got there, it was too late, Mai had lost all her starships to him. People have no choice but to duel him because he intimidates them with a flamethrower. Then the duel against Yugi goes like it is known. With darkness, the lightsabers locking all the monsters in and the turtle shooting the castle so that Panic's monsters are destroyed and Panic thus somehow automatically loses the duel. There's a nice mind crush at the end and Panic hasn't been seen since. Manga. Here Mai has already met our friends before. When she was alone in the tent in the evening, Panic came over, kidnapped her and forced her to a duel which she also lost. And he doesn't even use expensive flamethrowers here, but he ties a rope around his opponent's neck so when his opponent loses or wants to run away, he simply strangles him. Then the duel proceeds one to one just like in the anime. Only there is a very small but quite dark difference. During the duel, Penny keeps seeing himself being led up a staircase to darkness with a rope around his neck. Then when he lost the duel, the trapdoor opens and he was hanged. Anime. After the duel between the two best friends forever came to an end, both lost and wanted to cool off in the cool water, Joey was able to save Yugi but didn't have the right key for himself and also no more power. So it's a good thing that his sister was there to grab the key and jump in after him, thus saving Joey as well. Manga. In the manga it was a bit more weird. After the duel, Yugi was saved as usual. Then Kaiba held the key above water and dropped it in the sea hoping that the key would sink faster than Joey with the anchor and not be swept away by the current. If you think about it, that was a really stupid move. But hey, the key gets to him, he can free himself and Joey thanks Kaiba and completely different from the anime, Kaiba doesn't think bad about Joey here but Kaiba notices that Joey was slowly turned into a good duelist. Anime. Idiot in Battle City Tournament gets a lot of cards from Kaiba to build a deck the way he wants. The two duel, the guy draws 4 cards and Kaiba plays instant obelisk. Manga. Actually almost the same. Guy gets cards, makes a deck out of them and again he didn't understand the rules and draws again only 4 cards at the beginning of the duel. Why Kaiba draws only 3? But it doesn't matter anyway because Kaiba plays instant obelisk again to duel the other guy out of life. Anime. 
Marek and Bakura conspire to get the God Card so Bakura can get the Millennium Items afterwards. Oh no! Bakura is hurt! Lucky then that Marek was nearby, rescues him and brings him to Joey and Co. The infiltration of Marek Blishta was successful. Manga. In the manga it's almost the same, only in violent and also somehow strange. Here Marek and Bakura talk it out normally again. Other than just randomly pretending to be injured, Bakura stabs himself in the arm here and lets Marek save him. Then Marek chills with the injured Bakura all the time in town and none of the passerby care that there is an injured, unconscious teenager lying on the motorcycle. The infiltration plan went just as well here. Anime. In the anime, Kaiba just badmouthed Joey all the time. Even when Joey was dueling Marek in the semi-finals at Battle City. Joey is just a third rate duelist, why he doesn't pick an opponent his size like a baby or a monkey. Then when Ra was heating Joey up, he couldn't make his last attack and passed out. Manga. Kaiba is quite different here. In the duel between Marek and Joey, Kaiba saw how well Joey did and showed him respect for not being such a bad duelist after all. But not only that, when Ra also made Joey feel warm in the manga, Joey didn't just pass out, he died here. In death, Kaiba then accepted Joey as a good duelist and also said that Joey's death wasn't in vain, even if he was brought back to life afterwards. Anime. No matter how much you show Kaiba the connection between him and his former self, between Yugi and Atom, no matter how many times you travel with him to ancient Egypt and the most intense things happen around him, he just denies everything possible. From the beginning to the end, Kaiba was convinced that it was all so illusory and all in all just a figment of his imagination. Maybe Yugi's mind crush had been a bit too harsh after the first duel. Kaiba really got to experience minimal character development in the anime, even though he's my favorite character, especially with his spells and such. Manga. Here it is completely different. Yes, he doesn't want to know anything about it at the beginning and even in the duel against Yugi he still had his doubts. It's also somehow quite understandable. But when more and more came to it, he finally accepted it in the last duel against Yugi. He realizes that the duel was predetermined by fate. At the end of the Battle City arc, he even gets out of all the hate. He looks forward to the future with his little brother. The hatred for his stepfather is left behind where the island also goes down. And with that, he had an enormous character development. Anime. This thing is actually quite short. In the anime, the producers thought that the best jet that would fit to Kaiba is, of course, a jet that looks like a blue ice. From the aerodynamics, maybe not quite the best, but Kaiba is someone who skills everything on pimp. And no kidding, I absolutely love it! Manga. In the manga, unfortunately it's a bit more boring, as here he just has an ordinary jet that's painted a very little bit like a blue eyes. This is definitely something that the anime has done significantly better. That's it again with this video, I hope you enjoyed it and I will hope to see you again next time, so take care my friends.